Tired of the hustle and bustle of Metro Manila? Turn to the south in the quaint towns and exciting cuisine and historical sites of the southern Tagalog region, which comprise Cavite, the cradle of the Philippine Revolution and the historical capital of the Philippines. Laguna, the home of the famous Seven Lakes and Pagsanhan Falls. Batangas, the home of the world-famous Taal Volcano. Rizal Province, the province named after Jose Rizal. And the historic Quezon Province, named after the second president of the Philippines, Manuel Luis Quezon. Let's take you on a grand tour of the Calabarzon region, giving special focus to its history, arts, culture and heritage, and the wide-ranging variety and fusion of culinary experience and its wonderful people. Your tour begins in the province of Cavite. Often called the historical capital of the Philippines, Cavite was the cradle of the Philippine Revolution, a conflict that flared up in 1896 between the Spanish colonial rulers of the Philippines and a fervent native uprising that sought national independence. On June 12, 1898 in Cavite, the Philippines proclaimed independence from its colonizers. The historic deed was performed by revolutionary leader Emilio Aguinaldo from the second floor window of his family home. The home and window can still be viewed today in the town of Cawit. Now known as the General Emilio Aguinaldo Shrine, the house is both a monument honoring the Philippines' revolutionary past and a museum preserving a vision of life in the Aguinaldo household over a hundred years ago. You can view the bedrooms of Aguinaldo's three daughters and the master's bedroom Aguinaldo shared with his second wife, Maria Agoncillo. The bedroom hides several secrets. For one, the closet conceals a hidden passageway. Aguinaldo designed some of the furniture found in the house, including pieces designed for hiding weapons. In the kitchen, a plain wooden table contains a secret hatch to an escape tunnel leading underground. Whispers speak of a complex of hidden passageways down below. Well, that's intriguing. The trouble is that you can't get into the secret tunnels. But their existence highlights the danger of living as a revolutionary. Something to keep in mind as you browse the General Emilio Aguinaldo Shrine's display illuminating the history of the Philippine Revolution. If you are curious about the other side in the revolution, head over to the Jerónimo B. de los Reyes Museum in General Trias, Cavite. The museum presents an eclectic mix of history, photography, geography, and aeronautics, reflecting the varied interests of its founder. History buffs will gravitate to the exhibit of works by Manuel Arias Rodriguez, the Spaniard best known for his photograph of the 1896 execution of Jose Rizal, national hero to the Philippines. Arias captured many shots of the Spanish campaign, showing the human side of the colonial aggressors, many of them young soldiers. Other photographs by Arias depict the Manila of the 1890s, before wars and disasters alter the face of the city. You can't travel back to those bygone days, but you can do the next best thing. Visit a reconstruction of a 19th century home at the De La Salle University campus in Das Marinas, Cavite. The Museo de la Salle is styled to resemble a traditional bahay na bato, or stone manor. Like the elite mansion it is patterned on, the museo features a zaguan, a spacious ground floor whose rooms function as household storage. A large staircase leads up to the second floor of Kaida, a receiving area for entertaining everyday visitors. For formal occasions, the family offers an impressive sala mayor, or living room, full of elaborate furnishings, family portraits, and sumptuous decor. 
The museo also houses an ornate family chapel, master's bedroom, comedor or dining room, and an old-fashioned cocina. You can sense what it would have been like to be part of a Spanish mestizo family living in 19th century luxury. No Cavite journey is complete without a visit to Tagaytay City, the tourism hotspot of Cavite. Due to its lofty elevation, Tagaytay enjoys a cool, refreshing climate. That makes it a popular getaway destination for Manila City dwellers looking for a place to unwind. Tagaytay abounds with bed and breakfast inns. Sonia's Garden is a combined bed and breakfast, herbal garden and resort spa. The cottages are named after herbs and evoke a country lifestyle. Guests are provided with pen and rose-scented ink with which to memorialize a visit. Drop by the country store. It's stocked with herbal plants and extracts, aromatic oils and enchanting handicrafts. Go for a walk out of doors. The flowering garden abounds in beauty and solace. Sonia's garden offers a sanctum in which to delight in nature, find tranquility, and even celebrate marital bliss. Another relaxing getaway in Tagaytay is the Nurture Spa Village, a garden resort that invites those seeking to de-stress and detoxify to find comfort and cleansing amid its blissful surroundings. You can also dine here. On simple fare such as crispy fried smoked milk fish and bread rolls with buffalo cheese and pesto, or healthy servings of fresh fruit and muesli, and an energy-rich smoothie. You can enjoy a long session of nurturing touch therapy, massage in a word. One special treatment involves placing steamed hot pouches of herbs wrapped in banana leaves against the skin, a method inspired by traditional practices of bodily rejuvenation. When you are fully relaxed, you can retire to a cozy and charming heritage hut. Accommodations inspired by the native dwellings upon the Ifugao rice terraces, only furnished with all modern comforts. Laguna's rustic countryside is adorned with cheerful towns where historic traditions are treasured. A heritage tour of the province should bring you to the town of Mahihai where you'll find a colonial-era church that's over 280 years old. The Church of St. Gregory the Great dates back to 1730. The fortress-like structure is a joy to behold. The red brick walls and ivy-covered buttresses make for a gorgeous sight. Another lovely old Laguna church can be found in the town of Pakili. St. Peter of Alcantara Church was completed in 1767 after 35 years of construction. Enshrined in it is the Marian statue known as Our Lady of Turumba, believed by parishioners to be the source of miracles. Behind the sacred altar, carved niches house 14 different icons of the Catholic faith. A few minutes away in the town of Paete is a third old church, the Church of St. James the Apostle. The Baroque interior is very much a cloistered sanctuary cloaked in a vaguely medieval atmosphere. These walls, once made a dungeon for prisoners of war during the time of the Japanese occupation, now it's hard to imagine the horrors that happened in this place. Outside, you'll come across a block of stores selling handmade Christmas decorations. Paete is a town known for its arts and crafts, especially the craft of wood carving. For a glimpse of a craftsman's skill, stop by the wood shop of Luis Akak, one of the town's master carvers. Here, he is putting finishing touches on a carving of children playing a traditional game of sunka. Paete is not the only Laguna town put on the map by local craftsmanship. The towns of Pakil, Lumban, and Liliu each have their own specialties. 
Pakil is known for the art of whittling, an art that requires skill with a blade and an intricate touch, shaving slivers of wood finely into delicate ornaments. Feathered birds, flowers, and more can spring forth from the whittler's hand. Another town, Lumban, is named Embroidery Capital of the Philippines. Burda Hand is one of Lumban's best-known embroidery shops. They specialize in making Barong Tagalog, an elegant Philippine dress shirt. Skilled needle workers demonstrate the attention to detail that goes into the quality of embroidery performed here. Liliu is a town famed for footwear. It is called Chinelas Capital of the Philippines after the simple slippers that many Filipinos wear. Step along Liliu's main downtown strip, Gattayao Street, to admire the locally made slippers, shoes, and sandals that brighten the many store displays. You can't miss Badong's Footwear, one of the oldest stores which has been garbing heels since 1962. Laguna's main tourist center is the town of Pagsanhan. It's a place that draws adventure-minded souls seeking to visit the famous Pagsanhan Falls and shoot the rapids. If you're doing that, it's a good idea to book an overnight stay at the Pagsanhan Falls Lodge. You'll have easy access to the river and get to rest in comfy rooms so you'll be ready and raring to hit the rapids in the morning after a good breakfast at the lodge, of course. Known as the Magdapio Falls by natives, the Pagsanhan Falls are commonly approached via banca, small riverboats. Getting there requires a tricky upstream traverse through rocks and rapids as maneuvered by skilled banqueros or boat guides. The falls are lovely, but truly it is the rush of adventure that makes the trip so rewarding. South of Laguna and Cavite lies the province of Batangas. Its predominant landmark is Taal Volcano an active volcanic peak on an island in the middle of Ta'al Lake. There is also a municipality by the name of Ta'al, located south of the lake area. Due to the presence of multiple ancestral houses, part of the municipality is designated the Ta'al Heritage Town. One of the Ta'al Heritage Houses is now the Marcela Marino Agoncillo Museum named after the principal seamstress behind the stitching of the very first national flag of the Philippines. The actual flag sewing was done at a residence in Hong Kong. The house in Taal is one that had been built by Marcela Agoncillo's grandfather in the 1700s, making it one of the older buildings in town. Another 17th century Taal home Casa Villavicencio is a classic bahay na bato that belonged to Don Eulalio Villavicencio and Doña Gliceria Marella de Villavicencio, a couple who gave their support to the Philippine Revolutionary Movement. On admiring the home's pleasant interior, try to imagine the revolutionaries in the guise of merchants gathering here to plot against Spanish rule. Going down Agoncillo Street, you may come across the sign of Galeria Taal. It marks the renovated century-old home of the Ilagan Barion family. Within its walls, you will find an impressive collection of vintage cameras and photographs. Classic Kodak brownies and German Roliflexes and other antique shooters invite your fascination. The old photographs, some dating back to the 1870s, depict the quainter Manila of long bygone days. You can almost relive that past era with a Villa Tortuga colonial experience. At this heritage stop, you're not limited to a walking tour of antique rooms and furnishings. Downstairs, Villa Tortuga houses a vintage photo studio where you can dress in 18th century style clothing and pose for a formal portrait. Upstairs, you can seat yourselves at the dining table 
for a classic repast. Now that's cultural tourism. Overlooking Ta'al Heritage Town is the classic Catholic church in Asia, the Basilica of St. Martin of Tours. It takes only a few moments within the nave to be impressed by the grandiose scale of its architecture. Not to mention the exalted beauty of its art and ornamentation. If you wish, you can climb to the top of the church belfry. From up there, you can take in the picturesque sweep of the Ta'al landscape. Would you like a souvenir from Ta'al? Why not stop at the district of Balison? a name it shares with a butterfly knife that is traditionally crafted here. Diosdado Ona is one of the bladesmiths keeping the Balisong tradition alive. His store displays finely crafted weapons that are attractive yet dangerous. It takes an experienced wielder to handle the knife safely, which Ona does at stunning speed. Is that too quick for you? Let's see that again. Kids, please don't try this at home. Our next stop is Lipa, Batangas. Only an hour and a half away from Metro Manila, Lipa offers a place for a city dweller to get away for relaxation and recreation and a game of golf. You can head to the Mount Malaraya Golf and Country Club. It offers a 27-hole all-weather championship golf course where the pleasant green is set against a gorgeous backdrop. If you need accommodations, the club offers deluxe hotel suites. A set breakfast is part of the room package. If you are looking to feed your soul, go to the Church of Our Lady of Mount Carmel in Lipa. The stately church with a clean modernist aesthetic provides a sharp contrast to the heritage churches we've seen. It has a heritage of a different sort, a history of miraculous happenings. Although they are not officially recognized, the miracles are said to have taken place in the monastery garden. The most famous story concerns an apparition of the Virgin Mary on September 12, 1948. A different sort of retreat is offered by the farm at San Benito in Lipa. It is a resort spa that helps guests to achieve a better well-being. A stay at the farm is called a wellness holiday and includes deluxe accommodations that may possibly come with your own private swimming pool. If you would like a more affordable room, you can stay at Salu Terraces whose cozy huts are modeled after traditional rice barns of the southern Philippines. The sprawling grounds of the farm provide numerous types of spaces in which to have a fulfilling experience. You can meditate, do yoga, seek quiet and solace, admire nature, enjoy the air and the trees, and the company of waterfowl. At the Healing Sanctuary, you can have your therapeutic needs met. No matter what you choose to do at the farm, you're in for a most enriching visit. Rizal is a province that is closely associated with arts and craftsmanship. That would have pleased its namesake, Jose Rizal. The town of Angono, Rizal, is highly celebrated for its thriving community of artists. Tucked into its narrow streets are simple art spaces that blend into the neighborhood. One of these is the Blanco Family Museum. It is well named, for as you walk the curlicued exhibit hall, you'll encounter painting after painting not only by the patriarch Jose V. Blanco, but all seven of his children. A testament to the prodigious talent of a family that lives and breathes and even exhales art. You can easily spend a day in Angono wandering from art space to art space, even when stopping for lunch. 
Balao Balao Specialty Restaurant is a whimsically decorated eatery that doubles as an art gallery where you can admire a tableau of masterful wood carvings from the lifelike to the fanciful. Upstairs, you might come upon artisans at work. Today, they are not carving wood, but assembling paper mache characters. These oversized creations will be joining many others on the day of Gigantes Festival, when giant effigies parade the town to celebrate the feast of San Clemente. Talking of feasts, it's time to appreciate the culinary side of Balao Balao. The place is known for exotic and challenging fare that includes the infamous soup number no. five or soup with bull's testicles. You may also chow on hantik, a plate full of ants, the serving of uok or wood grubs, and a fermented shrimp dish called ginisang balao. These are good eats, honestly, that go well with a gigante-sized basket of seafood rice. Our next stop is another display of art, but one that's a lot less traditional. Welcome to Yab Design, a builder of plaster resin models for entertainment and decor. The company showroom in Angono will acquaint you with fabulous creations in a range of styles, from kid-friendly to cartoony, from comical to fantastical, from sophisticated to beastly, and sometimes eerily lifelike. From the modern to the stone age, the oldest works of art discovered in the Philippines are kept not in a museum, but found out of doors. They have come to be called the Angono Binangonan petroglyphs. Carved into a rock face on the Binangonan hills, these Neolithic engravings were made some 5,200 years ago. Today, the petroglyphs are endangered by erosion and vandalism. We sincerely hope that this priceless prehistoric heritage will not soon be lost. The province of Quezon is east of Manila and most of Calabarzon. A heritage tour of Quezon is bound to take you to elegant Sariaya, a town that was built on the fortunes of coconut barons whose family estates were testaments to their wealth. A few ancestral homes remain standing here today. Sariaya has brought inspiration to many artists, including local painter Maria Pureza Escaño. Her vibrant paintings of women and children have delighted people from Manila to New York. One work, entitled Women of Sariaya, depicts women in the Villa Sariaya Heritage House. Villa Sariaya is a classic Bahay na Bato structure. In its walls, you'll encounter the genteel home where Don Catalino Rodriguez and his wife raised eight children. For your visit, hosts in colonial-era costumes add to the period atmosphere so that you can almost relive the bygone days when the family would gather in the Sala Mayor and listen to one of the children play the piano. Another historical site in Sariaya is St. Francis of Assisi Church dates back to 1748. The interior, bathed in light from glowing chandeliers, acquires what you might say is a golden hue. The church keeps a famous image of Santo Cristo de Burgos, which is sacred to Catholic devotees. If you would like a place in town in which to stay or swim, visit Balay Sadiaya Resort. With a central swimming pool encircled by suites and cottages, Balay Sadiaya makes a haven for rest and recreation. It's also not a bad spot at which to have your dinner. Quezon Province originally had for its capital the town of Tayabas, which kept the distinction from 1749 to 1901. That explains
explains the presence in town of the largest Catholic church in the province of Quezon, the 18th century Basilica of St. Michael the Archangel. Because of its shape, the church is called Ang Susi ng Tayabas, a term that means the key of Tayabas. Another heritage site in Tayabas is Malagonlong Bridge. Erected here between 1840 and 1850, the longest bridge constructed in the Spanish colonial era, Malagonlong, was built with over 100,000 adobe bricks. Tayabas-based swimming resort Batis Aramin has a name that suggests a burbling brook. A small river runs through it, providing a place for boating and fishing activities. Batis Aramin also has swimming pools for children and adults. And you can stay overnight or longer in rooms that provide you a home away from home. While you're in Tayabas, you simply must check out the street known as Calle Budi. It takes its name from the chewy cassava cake that gets sold up and down the street, along with other treats like ube halaya or jelly purple yam that takes the form of a fish. Tayabas is home to a popular culinary destination, Kamayan Sapala Isdaan Restaurant whose name translates into eating with your hands at a fish pond, the traditional style of dining in the countryside. Using only your hands, or not, you can enjoy delights such as fresh tilapia bathed in coconut milk, sizzling salpicao, tamarind soup, salad of fiddlehead fern, and the sticky dessert known as pilipit. If that doesn't satisfy your sweet tooth, you can order a box of the local delicacy, Rodillas Yema Cake. It's a creamy custard cake of mild but tantalizing sweetness with sprinkles of cheese. Something to bring home to your family at the end of a trip. But your tour isn't over yet. Check out a few more culinary destinations in Quezon. The first is in Lucena City, the current provincial capital. A popular native delicacy is the stir-fry noodle dish known as chami. It's traditionally made with pieces of shrimp, chicken, carrot, and cabbage, and seasoned with soy sauce. At Giuseppe Bar y Restaurante, the traditional recipe has been jazzed up in several ways. As an Asian fusion dish made with hoisin sauce, given a Hawaiian touch in aloha chami, or paired with smoked fish and packed in banana leaves. Drop by Giuseppe to try one of these variations or simply a taste of the classic Lucena Chami. Lukban is another Quezon province town that produces a local delicacy. Here, it is a garlic-infused variant of the native Philippine sausage, longanisa. You can order a plate of Lukban longanisa at Buddy's restaurant an eatery that's become an institution in this town. And don't stop with an order of longanisa. Buddy's carries a varied menu of local favorites, including a lukban specialty called pancit habhab, a meatloaf-like dish embutido and jardinera, and fresh lumpia with a sweet sauce. At Buddy's, you can enjoy a food fiesta every day. Another fine culinary destination is found in the town of Tiaong. Ugu Bigyan's Potter Garden is a pleasant hideaway in a rustic town. Walking in the garden, you can start to feel that it's a place deeply infused with harmony, where light, air, wood, stone, and bamboo co-mingle with the work of human hands. You find this in Ugu Bigyan's earthenware pieces that harken back to natural forms of leaves, fish, and fowl. In the sun-kissed terracotta and thatched roofs, in the home-style repast served for your visit, you'll enjoy delicately fried lumpiang puso ng sagi, sweet, very filling ginataang bilo-bilo, and an Ugu Bigyan specialty, kulawo. 
which is made out of puso ng saging or banana heart. There are other dishes here, earthenware dishes and sundry ceramic creations by Ugu Bigyan. Embodying simple beauty, they are sublime expressions of the artistry of human handiwork. Five provinces. Escape, relax, enjoy, relive history. See up close and personal the original artistry of the old town folks. Fill your gastronomic cravings in true fashion of culinary adventure. Only in Southern Tagalog region, where you can find the playground of interesting and uplifting experiences. One you have lifted in history books and live its past in the present modern times. Add to it are the charming towns and landscapes of Calabarzon that will allure any visitor and find every reason to stay. Not only for pleasure, but for one and a thousand reasons that complete your satisfaction in a one and true vacation. Come and visit us. It's more fun here. It's more fun in the Philippines.